Welcome to the Sample Chapter Podcast, the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Here's your host, Jason A. Meiske. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Sample Chapter Podcast. I am your host, as always, Jason A. Meiske. Hey, uh, we have an outstanding guest with us today. I, I cannot wait to give you this interview. We I had a really fun time. Uh, this was an unexpected pleasure getting to uh, even even getting to talk to him. But let's do, let's take care of business. We want to make sure we thank Podcast Garden is the host site for this show. If you're interested in starting your own show, you can go to Podcast Garden, uh, fill in the information, upload your show, and boom, you're off and running. And best part is it's free to start. So get on over there. They also have a full list of other shows that you can check out. Uh, It's really cool stuff. So Podcast Garden, make sure you head on over there and you can uh, can actually subscribe to my show from there. The show is also available on all podcast streaming services at this point. So wherever it is you're listening, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click the like button. Uh, Make sure you rate us. That's, That's a... Very important feature. It's just like uh, whenever you read a book that you enjoy, make sure you give it a a rating. It helps the author. Well, just the same thing here. It helps our show grow, helps other people find out about us. And, uh, you know, it's uh, we grow because of fans like you that come back every week and listen to us. I also want to give a big shout out to You Store All, self-storage facility of Warrensburg, Missouri. They are the premium place for climate control, conventional storage. That is the place to go. It's a fully fenced-in facility, over 40 cameras recording 24 hours a day. Managers are on site six days a week, and I they tell me that the owner actually does a drive around every Sunday checking things out, which I wonder about that because I was talking with the manager here a while back, and he was showing me that he actually pulls up camera footage on his phone. How cool is that? You know, I mean, you can just check that out and, oh, well, let's see what's on the gate. Who's in the gate? Okay, yep, these people are on the gate. Let me check the cameras. Okay, yep, that guy's unloading some stuff or loading some stuff or whatever that's pretty cool can't ask for very much more so make sure you check them out online at ustoral.net that is the letter u s t o r a l l dot net a little bit of uh you know lifting myself up right now uh my book nine mile bridge will be coming out later this week oh man i <laughs> It's, uh, you yeah, know, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I'll, I'll probably do an episode coming up sometime where uh, it'll be, the focus will be on my book. But man, what a trip it's been. Um, I, I, I just can't wait. I'm so blessed uh, to be in this position. And, uh, you know, it, this is awesome. I'm just loving it. I'm loving every minute of it. And uh, I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> uh, yeah, the book will be out on ebook. Uh, so on Kindle, Kindle Unlimited. If you are a subscriber to that, you can pick it up for free, borrow it for free. Uh, that will come out, should be Thursday this week, the first week of April 2018. So make sure you look for that, Nine Mile Bridge. It is a uh, thriller, uh, young adult vein. Yeah, like I said, that book comes out later this week on ebook. And a few weeks from now, we'll have the paperback ready to go. So that's a little bit of news for me. But yeah, today I've got a rare day off during the week where I am out here in my man cave in the garage. Uh, got the heater turned on. I am hanging out in my sweats. Actually, I'm wearing, <laughs> actually, I'm wearing, uh, let's see here. I've got Zubaz pants, red and gold Zubaz pants uh, for my Kansas City Chiefs, my beloved Kansas City Chiefs. I'm wearing a Boba Fett t-shirt and a a sweatshirt on top of that and i got my heater set up next to me because it's it's doggone cold out here right now i don't know where where you are in in the world but uh, here in missouri lately uh, man mother nature pulled quite the trick on us for april's full day april fool's day on easter uh dropped the temperatures and it got cold so when i first came out here to do a little bit of work on the show and uh, of course i'm going to be working on editing and uploading my book all day today working on this um it was 59 it was 59 in the garage here at my desk now i'm up to 67 so it's it's warming up but uh you know i got my coffee i got a little whiskey in the fridge here next to me in case i need a little extra warm up (laughs) uh 
And of course, I got my cigars to uh, get me by too, and the uh, the Google Home sitting here to play music for me. But right now, I'm talking to you and getting all this stuff done. Uh, my guest today is Armand Rosamelia. Now, you may have heard his name, you may not have, but uh, the man is, well, he'll appreciate this, he's a legend in Florida and in New Jersey. <laughs> uh, he is a uh, Jersey-born guy who then moved to Florida. He is a, he's a writer of horror, crime thrillers, contemporary fiction, heavy metal lover, uh, zombie writer, and he recently wrote, of all things, a nonfiction baseball book called the uh, A View from My Seat. My season with the jumbo shrimp. Now that uh, that book, the reason I want to make sure and mention that book is that actually comes out here in a couple days. Uh, right now, as I record this, the release date for this show even is April third, and that book comes out in two days, April fifth. So just two days from now, you can go online and pick up that a copy of that book. That's a really cool thing. That's the uh, I think they call that the semi pro team in Florida where he lives. And he's a he's a big fan of that team. He goes out and he checks out all their shows, or all their shows. He goes and watches all their games. He's a big fan. From the way he described it to me, it sounds like a wonderful trip down memory lane of what it was like to spend a season following them around, uh, game after game. And you know, if you're a baseball fan, this sounds like something that's going to appeal to you. It sounds like it's something that's going to appeal to a lot of a lot of people out there who who enjoy you know that America's favorite pastime. And, uh, you know, I encourage you to pick it up. I think I'm going to have to grab a copy myself. Today's book that he's reading, Yard Full of Bones. Now, this book does not come out until May 22nd. So I'm fudging just a little bit on my promise that, uh, you know, all of my books would be, all of the books on the show would be available right away. Now, technically, the book is available because you can pre-order it. So I'm not lying. I'm not doing anything. I'm just maybe fudging a little bit on the truth. But when you have a chance to speak to somebody like Armand Rosamelia, you know, I'm willing to uh, willing to do that. Because what you're going to hear today, the uh, the prologue from this book, is pretty outstanding. And it definitely draws you in right away and leaves you wanting more. So whenever you hear this, make sure you head over to that website. It's part of an anthology. Uh, or a digital catalog, I guess is more appropriate. Uh, the 2018 digital catalog with unnervingmagazine.com so that's why it's available for pre-order so once you what it is is you're purchasing not just one story not just the one by Armand but you're getting a full year's worth of stories from this digital magazine I I was looking it up and checking it out myself and uh, this is pretty cool this is really cool stuff I'm sure it's going to be available online if you just want that book, but this is a this is a pretty cool offer that you can go in and uh, sign up for this and pre-order it now. Uh, but you're going to hear about that today. Now, one of the things I think is really cool, having gotten to speak with Armand, is it's just another example of writing community and how writers, you know, we we reach out to each other, we, we cling to each other. We, I think, the days of writers hiding in a corner. Don't don't share my information. Don't share this information with others. I don't want people doing what I do. I think those day, those are bygone days. You know, all of the writers that I know and I follow and listen to, they are so open and willing to talk to whomever comes along. Uh, whether that's you know people in my own group, but not just them. But I mean, this is writers I've talked to. I mean, you know, we had you know a top. We've had a couple of top one hundred authors from Amazon on here in the last few weeks and I mean every one of them have been willing to come on and talk and that's just on my show you know this is them sharing samples of their writings you know they I hear them all all the time on other podcasts Armand is uh, is another one of those very special people very special writers he's got his own podcast network called Project Entertainment Network where he runs the Mondo Method podcast, uh, which is one that I follow, where he discusses writing and how-to tips on writing. And then he also does the Armcast podcast, where he interviews uh, not just writers, but entertainers. Uh, He's had comic book writers, he's had filmmakers, he's had uh, all kinds of people on there, Um, and, and authors, lots of authors on there. So this is a, you know, he's he's a really unique personality in that he's also one who is reaching out and helping other people, helping other authors. And I was thrilled to see that uh, Armand was willing, uh, not just willing, but he jumped at the chance. He was he was really happy to come on the show, and and I was thrilled that he uh, that he said yes. And 
you know, I'm just blown away with the uh, the reception the show has had on um, on authors and uh, people that come back every week and listen. And uh, well, you know, I'm I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm not here to talk about uh, the show. We're here to talk about the authors and their stories. So maybe I should stop talking. <laughs> and let's get over to our interview with Armand Rosamilia, and he can tell you a little bit more about himself uh, from the man's own words. And welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of the Sample Chapter Podcast. Today, well, let's see if uh, if you can guess who I'm here with. When I talk about crime thrillers, horror, contemporary fiction, heavy metal, zombies, and, of course, baseball. Who do you think of? Well, of course, you think of Armand Rosamelia. Armand, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, man? I'm great. I'm great. How's uh, how's Florida treating you? It's been, uh, it's been cold for a couple days, so it'll be 90, uh, probably by the next weekend <laughs> we just had uh we hit 70s here in missouri last week for about part of the week and then we had a cold front came through and dropped back down to the 20s and then it was warmed up and then we had snow and then now it's starting to warm up again i don't i don't miss that i'm i'm born and raised in jersey so <clears throat> oh they, my got, gosh. they got killed uh, up in the northeast recently so i don't uh, I don't miss any of that. Oh, man. Well, uh, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a full-time author. I've been uh, full-time going on uh, six years now. I write horror. I write crime thrillers. I write nonfiction. I pretty much write whatever I feel like writing and uh, kind of throw it up against the wall and see what sticks. That's kind of been my thing for a number of years. I'm also a podcaster. I run... Uh, Armcast podcast where I interview other authors and I also do the Mondo Method podcast with me and co-host Chuck Buddha and we kind of break down publishing and writing and different things like that and they're both on Project Entertainment Network which conveniently I also own and that has 25 different podcasts on it that uh, me and my wife basically took over about a year or so ago and uh, we're, we're basically running that so between full-time podcast stuff and then full-time writing i uh, i sleep somewhere in there oh my gosh see and now you just need to do like me and throw in a few grandkids and then you're all set right no no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no grandkids <laughs> let's, let's calm down <laughs> well i going over your your catalog i mean you got just right off the bat i saw at least three series you got your dying day series chelsea avenue dirty deeds which by the way dirty deeds i just started reading the first book the other day and i'm i'm hooked right off the bat so i know i'm gonna probably be picking up all of those how many series do you have going well dying dying days i actually ended it now uh i ended it at nine books and Hmm. that was that was kind of my baby that was the one that really started me partially responsible for me going full time when I started writing those books, but I ended it at nine and it was kind of sad. I mean, I've been writing those stories for, for, you know, eight or nine years now. So that was a little, uh, that was a little weird, but I, I just, I felt like I had uh, told the story I had enough and I didn't want to, I didn't want to be that guy who wrote 400 books in a series and just milk it. So I just said, you know what, nine and that was it. So that's done. Um, Chelsea Avenue, I just came out with Chelsea Avenue 2, and then Chelsea Avenue 3 will be coming out at some point later in this year. Um, Devil Dog Press put those out. I had completed Green River Blend, which was a horror trilogy about coffee. Devil Dog Press also put that one out. Um, And then, of course, I have Dirty Deeds, which is a crime thriller series. The first one won a uh, Kindle Scout contract, so it's a Kindle Press book. Hmm. And um, I, I I took the rest of them basically starting from two, and I'm I'm working on five now. My goal was to have a new book every six months because it's an easy read. It's 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 a fun, fast paced you know action book. So I didn't want to wait a year. I wanted to put them out about every six months. So mm-hmm. I couldn't couldn't come to an agreement with Amazon on that, but uh, it was a huge huge boost having the first one still through them. 
So uh, the other ones are selling quite nicely. So I, I have no end in sight on that series. I just basically just want to keep writing until I don't really, either I don't feel it anymore or the, the readers just say it enough for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. It's, uh, I, I mean, I, I follow your, your Mondo Method podcast. That's how I got to know you. And then uh, I, I picked up the Dirty Deeds the other day. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll just peruse it real quick the other night before bed. And next thing I know, I'm like four chapters in and <laughs> I keep nudging my wife saying, hey, check this out. Check this out. Look, look at the scene. Look at what happened. And she's just like, all right. Well, I mean, even my wife was like, wow, that, that is pretty cool, actually. So, I mean, yeah, we're <laughs> I definitely got hooked on it right away. It's a, it's a phenomenal, phenomenally written series, and I, I'm not even I'm not biased at all. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it, it, you can recognize perfection. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> so now, you so you write in several different projects, and I've I've heard you on your show talking about how that you actually you don't just like write one and then you go to another one, you write all of them like at different times a day. You're, you're just always in one or another at the same time. How do you keep those separated? Well, the, the Mondo method podcast started because <clears throat> I figured out the way I, I figured out the way that I write is better in small doses. So I started, I, I stole it basically from Jonathan Mayberry who you, who told me he would write at the top of the hour, for the full, for 45 minutes. And then that last 15 minutes he would play and on the computer and go get coffee, whatever he had to do. And then at the top of the next hour, he would start writing again. So I started doing that. And I realized I was still trailing off. So then I decided at the top of the hour, I'm going to write for 15 minutes and that's it. And I was averaging about 600 words every sprint like that. And I was doing three or four of those a day. Hmm. And I jokingly online, cause Growing up, my, my nickname was Mondo. That's where the name of the uh, thing came from. So I called it the Mondo Method. And it caught on, and a lot of people actually use that and do that and post uh, every day that they're using it and stuff, which is really neat. So for me, I'm able to say it's like 10 in the morning. I write for that 15 minutes, and then I just stop. And it, like I said, it's usually about 600 words because I have the mindset of I have to write this chapter, this scene, whatever it is, I have to finish it before time runs out. And then that next 45 minutes, I go get coffee, I can play around, but I'm also thinking of, okay, at the top of the next hour, do I want to continue this story or do I want to jump into another one? Because a lot of times I have two or three different deadlines. So uh, at any given point, I have three or four books or stories that are open on my computer just waiting for me to jump in and I have a dry erase board, which has basically kind of every day, if I need to write 500 or a thousand of each uh, story and then what's due, what's the order and all that. So I really keep track of all that. That's the only thing that, that, you know, helps me to organize. Okay. That's, that's awesome. I mean, it's, and I've heard you talk about that on your show, but at the same time, I'm just now realizing like, man, I, I think I kind of do that myself. It's like, I'll sit down and I can write real good for about 15, 20 minutes and then my mind wanders or I make yeah. a mistake of turning on the internet or something. Yeah, that's, that was my, my point. After about that 15 minutes, I'm like, all right. So I would sit back and I would try to think of what's next. Cause I, I'm a total pantser. I don't outline at all. And then oh, wow. invariably I'm on Facebook, <laughs> you know, or I'm, <laughs> or I'm, I'm reading about baseball trades or something. And I'm like, I, right, well, I just, I just wasted this time. So now for me, it's great. 15 minutes, boom. I'm done. And then I know I have 45 minutes to play and do whatever I want. Okay. That's great. That's great. I'm going to have to uh, focus on that. I, I had to stop playing games. First thing where, you know, getting on the Xbox, but uh, yeah, I don't mess around as much as I used to. So speaking of baseball, uh, you write in a few different genres, uh, but then you just had a baseball book, nonfiction baseball book came out recently. What was that like? Um, well, I've always been a huge baseball fan. Uh, I grew up, even though I grew up in New Jersey, I grew up a Red Sox fan and everybody else grew up a Yankees fan. And a couple of years ago, um, you know, down here in, in Jacksonville and my wife had an outing for her work and she said, ah, we're going to go to the, the, see the Jacksonville Suns. And I said, I didn't even realize there was a, a team, you know, here. So we went and I, and I loved it. And, and I said, well, you know, maybe we'd do this again. So we went to a couple more games and she wasn't really a baseball fan all that much, but she knew I was. 
mm-hmm. but no one had ever explained the game to her. So once we got in, you know, we got into it about halfway through the 2016 season, she bought, you know, uh, season tickets for us to go because she knew I loved it. And I went to every game. And so last year, 2017, we went to every game, except for when I was doing um, a couple of book signings. So 70 home games, we went. In fact, we saw the team. The, they changed the name to the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. We went on the, on the road, and we saw them in Pensacola, and we saw them in Biloxi, Mississippi, and Pearl, Mississippi. We, we uh, basically went to other stadiums to see them play. And it was a few weeks into the season, and I got the idea – you know what, I think I'm going to write, you know, kind of the season. I'm going to write out what's, what uh, I'm going on and going to the games and all this. And I just called up the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp, and I talked to Noel, who's the assistant general manager, and I said, listen, I, I'd love to meet with you. I have an idea for a book. And he loved it. They were, I mean, they, they just loved the idea, and they gave me access to all of the office staff, uh, players on the field, the coaches, the owner of the team, I interviewed him a couple of times and going to the games, everybody would come up and talk to us and stuff. And uh, so I got to meet a lot of really cool people. And I had, like I said, I had that, that great access. So the, the book became the, the season of going to the Jumbo Shrimp and then the, the moves and which players are eventually would go to the Miami Marlins or which players were cut, released, all these little stories mixed in with my own personal stories from as a kid growing up as a baseball fan and my family's huge baseball fan. So we would go on trips. My dad would say, Hey, get in the car. It's Friday morning, get in the car. We're driving to Detroit from New Jersey because uh, you know, I, he's a Detroit Tigers fan and we're going mm-hmm. to a game. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so that's kind of how it began. So it was a lot of those stories. And then I got to interview my parents for the book and hear a lot of, there a lot of the stories that I thought I'd heard, but I had never heard before. So it was really, it was really neat putting it together and everything. And um, the print book is out. The ebook officially drops the first day of minor league baseball, which is April 5th is when the book will officially be released. But uh, April 28th, uh, which is a Saturday night, I'm actually doing a book signing at the baseball grounds in Jacksonville. Uh, during uh-huh. the oh, and, that's cool which is awesome. So they put me on their promotion schedule and a ton of people are, are, are going to come out and they're, they're selling the book in the gift shop at the stadium. And then they're selling it online through their website. So it's been, it's been amazing. Um, that's, was, yeah, that's neat. great. It was neat. Cause then I had ordered like 50 copies of the, of the book and then I immediately sold out. Everybody wanted one. So then I ordered <laughs> another 50. And then when the team said, oh, yeah, we'll take them for the gift shop. And then I said to my wife, we probably should order a lot. So she's like, just order 500. And I was like, holy crap, okay. <laughs> so we ordered 500, which I have 10 boxes of books sitting in my living room right now. Uh, but I'm confident we'll blow through those because <clears throat> so many people in Jacksonville and, and beyond have, have ordered the book and everything already, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. What's the name of it? It's A View from My Seat, uh, My Season with the Jumbo Shrimp. Okay. That is that is really cool. So you go from crime thrillers, horror, zombies, <laughs> all this supernatural to nonfiction season of baseball. That's really awesome. I mean, that's going to really bring in – you're going to potentially bring in some new readers. Yeah, it's, it's fun because there's that – small percentage of them that will basically read everything that I write. And -hmm. then there's other ones that will only read the zombie. They won't read the horror stuff. They'll only read the zombie stuff. And then there's others that when I do, I did a contemporary fiction series set in Florida. They'll only read that. And then they find out that Dirty Deeds is also tied into that one. Some of the characters. So then they kind of move into that one. Oh, okay. So there's, I, I do a lot of, I've kind of created a mythos. So no matter what genre I'm writing, there's characters that's kind of set in the same world. So you're likely to meet characters uh, in other books or cameos of characters somewhere down the line, which is, which is always fun for me, especially when I don't name the character and then somebody sends me a message and says, wait a minute, the guy from Chelsea Avenue was in Green River Blend in the third book, wasn't he? You know, and I'm like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. That's great. 
Well, so that kind of, I mean, that leads right into my next question then uh, of what's coming soon. Sounds like we got a uh, view from my seat and uh, what else you got coming soon? Well, I'll have uh, Dirty Deeds 5 will be out uh, very soon. And then also I do every year I go up to the last, this will be my third year. I go back up to New Jersey uh, and with, a, with Chuck Buddha and Frank Edler, Tim Meyer, we do uh, some book signings up there, but we do them in breweries. So we call it Beers and Fears. And last year we had uh, Dan Padovana joined us for one of the signings and he'll, he'll join us again. And Todd Keesling and Summer Cannon will be at one of them this year. And it's neat because you're, you're, you're you know, you're there. So the, the first year when I was going to do it, I did it just in, I grew up in New Jersey, but I grew up in a tiny little fishing village called Belford. And I didn't want to do it in a, a, a signing in a bookstore. That's boring. So I found this brewery and it ended up that uh, the guy who owns it, him and his brothers, he was the guitar player in my punk band in high school, um, which I hadn't talked to in 20 something years. So I did the signing there in Belford, Belford uh, Brewing Company. And I said, you know what, I want to write a, I want to write a book um, set in Belford. So I wrote like a contemporary fiction book set in over the course of a Friday and a Saturday in 1987, where I grew up. And uh, it, I mean, I blew through a hundred and something copies that first uh, signing. So last year I put out stories two and blew through that as well. So now this year I'm also working on Belford stories three, which will be out in the beginning of May, right in time for all those signings. And this, this year we're doing five different uh, breweries, which is great. That is cool. Well, where, uh, where can people find you online? Uh, the easiest is if you go to author Armand Rosamilia on Facebook, I post there a lot. I also have a Patreon uh, page, so patreon.com slash Armand Rosamilia. Uh, I put a ton of, I, I put some free stuff on there as well, but that's basically I've moved a lot of my stuff there. So there's two different novels that every month you get one or two chapters of, a, of those novels on there. And one of them is called, uh, I'm writing called Bad People Doing Bad Things. And that's actually also a tie-in for, uh, for Dirty Deeds. Mm, okay. So, um, and then I do a lot of short stories that you can't find anywhere, out of print stuff. I do like a weekly recap of everything I've written. So everything's kind of going there now. Um, and then, you know, then uh, obviously you look me up on Amazon. Uh, Twitter, I'm Armand Author on there. Very, very active on there as well. And then uh, projectentertainmentnetwork.com. You'll find all of our podcasts and mine and everything out there too. So I'm kind of all over the place. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. Well, tell the, uh, tell the readers, what are we going to be hearing from you today? So me and Jay Wilburn have written, uh, we've written three books together so far. The first one was The Enemy Held Near, which was a haunted house book set in Georgia that Devil Dog Press released a couple of years ago. And so we wanted to write something, something a little different. So I, I came up with kind of a concept of two guys, a movie producer and a director. They're, um, they're gay. And one of them dies suddenly. And the other one has to, he realizes, wait a minute, he's, he had this secret life from me. You know, they're living in Hollywood. We had this secret life in Vermont. I never knew about. And uh, the town he grew up, but I never knew any of this stuff. So as he uncovers, a lot of that stuff, some really weird things begin to happen. So um, it's called Yard Full of Bones, and it'll be out by Unnerving Press uh, May 22nd. And if you go on Unnerving, I think it's unnervingmagazine.com, it's like a pre-release right now with a bunch of the other books. I'm, I'm going to read the, uh, the prologue from that. Okay. All right. That's going to be great. Well, Armand, this has been, this has been a real treat for me. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's one thing for me to listen to your podcast every week. Uh, it's a totally different thing to get to talk to you and, and it's been wonderful. Uh, I've really loved having you here and I just uh, can't thank you enough. Yeah, no, it's very cool. And I've been, I've been listening to, uh, to your past uh, few shows and it's pretty cool. So I will continue to listen and thank you for listening to mine. Ah, well, thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to get out of the way and uh, Armand Rosamilia with Yard Full of Bones. His mother had been dead for a week before anyone but he had bothered to call. It had been another two long days before he'd been able to escape Hollywood and work and the upcoming divorce and flight to Vermont. 
he steered clear of his ancestral family home in the woods. The funeral had been attended by a few townsfolk who didn't bother to speak to him. They looked at him sideways. So many of them were gone now. He was sure his mother had badmouthed him for leaving her to deal with the property all those years ago. He'd rented a sedan in Montpellier, avoiding the upgrade and anything fancy. One of the older suits from the back of his walk-in closet was too tight and he had it let out so he could breathe in it. A change of clothes on a backpack with his toiletries and he'd be on a plane. She'd made sure there would be no burial and had her ashes sealed in an urn in a thick metal box. Only he could take it with him under the condition it would go back to California and her ashes spread in the Pacific Ocean. His mother had never even left Vermont in her long, dark lifetime. Vermont was cold and overcast and reminded him too much of his childhood and the hardships and tragedies. The loss of family member after family member, he could not find the sign. He was now alone and he needed to break the cycle. Getting rid of her ashes would be the thing to unshackle his family from the curse once and for all, as if it really mattered now that he was the last living member. Being a homosexual meant the Silverstein name ended with him. Still, an icy finger ran up and down his spine whenever he thought of the house in the woods. It had been years since he'd woken from a nightmare he could definitively trace back to his childhood and his life, and the yard full of bones. Ghosts made of shadows followed you wherever you went, more prominent as you got older and had more behind than before you. He decided when he got back to Los Angeles, he'd write again, like he used to in the old days, before fame and money and Brock became his life, before they were expected to direct for the studios, before it had all gone to absolute shit. Gloria picked him up at the airport. He refused to answer any of her questions. Act like my fucking assistant and only worry about what I want, not what you want, he'd snapped at her. Get me a bottle of wine and something to write on. She'd left him in the spacious living room. He needed to get rid of this stifling furniture. Too many ghosts and memories blocked the view of the future. It was the last time he saw her, this loyal woman who'd sided with him during the initial split with Brock because he recognized that the man was out of control. Out of his mind on drugs and drinking heavily like the old days when he could handle and manage it. That and the other thing. Maybe the thing that was his real addiction and downfall all along. Mel needed a fresh start. Perhaps a move to Vancouver. Find an isolated spot and write a novel. He's always wanted to work on a book instead of film anyway. Visually, in a reader's mind, was where the challenge lied. On screen, it was too easy to just watch. He knew it didn't matter where he lived, really. Darkness found him everywhere. They came for him hours later, as he drooled on the couch, pen in hand and unfinished notes about a haunted ghost novel he'd been thinking of for a future movie. Melvin Silverstein, also known as producer Mel Silver, didn't feel the razor slide across his neck or feel the blood rushing out of his body, too intensely dreaming of a new book and a new beginning he was not allowed to chase. That was not his bit. That was not the part he was called to play. Hey, hey, hey. How cool was that? That was Armand Rosamilia reading Yard Full of Bones, his new release coming May 22nd. Like I said, you can pick that up on unnervingmagazine.com. It's available for pre-order now, uh, so make sure you go check that out. Hey, make sure you go and like us, subscribe, uh, rate us, wherever it is you're listening to us, and we'll be back again next week with another author and another story, another sample chapter. Bye.